create mind-blowing photos in less time with Luminar Neo is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. All right, so I want to just dive right in on the photo shoot that I did earlier uh, last week. Now, uh, we've used these examples earlier this week on how to organize the headshots uh, that I did for this family, and I broke them down into different subfolders. Well, what I did was I used just Jaden, and I gathered the six different styles of shoot that I did with her. Let me take this one and revert it to original. Good. So we have six different images that we're actually dealing with. So diff six different looks. All right. What I want to do is create one and then I can batch process it and apply it to all the images. But in order to do that, what I want to do is take them through some of my thought process when I did this. So here's the preset that I created, and I'm gonna show you where it stems from. So here's the preset, Jaden version three. Notice I do create quite a bit of them, and I just label them one, two, and so on. Now, this one here came directly from uh, a, a preset that we already have, and I'm gonna show you that in a second, but what I wanna show you is you have the choice. I love how this looks. looks, it's over the top, if I don't want it to go that extreme, I can just hide that one layer, and now I have a good look that I could give to the art director, and we're good to go. This would probably be the one that she would want hanging up on their wall or their family would want, all right? So let's come over here to the presets, and I use for this photos, let me get to it, here we go. For this photos, it looked at it, analyzed the image, and originally it came up with, and it's interesting that it changes, which I think it's good because it gives you a variety. Um, it did come up with experimental. And I like the one that it came up with. So what I did, let's see, yep, I did do that. I went in and I just um, favored the ones I really liked just in case I couldn't find that preset again. But here's the actual preset, glow, and notice up in here, it's gonna give me the um, signal that it was working, and this is what it came up with. Or I could do celebrate, and in a moment, celebrate will come up. That, that was the one I used. So celebrate was the one that, that I used, that, that I absolutely liked, and I used that as a base. Then from there, I'm going to edit, edit, in fact, let me use the pointer, and now I could self-teach myself, I could teach myself, how did Luminar get this look? So, I mean, to create this on my own would have taken maybe 20 or 30 minutes of me just sitting in front of the computer, and trying to analyze what I want it to look like. But look how fast I was able to create a really good image just by selecting a preset as a starting point and then you know go from there. So if the light leaks here are too much for you, just shut them off. If they're not, you like them. Well, now that gave me an idea because I, I hardly used flares and light leaks and even the, uh, the bokeh that came with it. But after I saw that preset, I thought, you know what? Maybe I could take a few minutes and just experiment and add different looks or different um, filter, or not di different filters here just to see what I'm missing. Well, that's not a bad looking one either. And again, I don't have to take it at full value, which is here, I could dial it back and slowly bring it in and then decide, you know, it may look a little too dark for me. Well, let's come back over here. 
bottom layer. Let's come back over here and figure out what did it use to create this actual look itself. Well, if I look at film grain, notice there's no amount applied to it. So I could just delete that. They did use mood. They used a, a LUT, which was celebrate. So if I like this LUT, here's before. Here's that. Oh, I do like it. I could create one of my own presets using celebrate as a base point. And then we have a super contrast. And that's bringing out just, let's look at it closer. It looks like it's just bringing out a little bit more contrast. Just enough to make a slight difference. But the real workhorse, let's go back down, is probably going to be with enhance. Good. And let's come down to develop. Yep, and sure enough, it was developed. So at this point, I could look in development. Let me hide this layer right here. So if I come over to develop, now I can analyze what develop is doing to give it a darker look the way it did. Th this is the original. And a few of these settings inside here is actually causing the, the image to look the way it does. And sure enough, Simon's favorite, it's the, it's the curves tool. So by using the curves, the way they did this, it's giving us this almost like matted type, um, muddy or crunching the blacks. Give me a better example. Crunching the blacks with the curves. Look. So again, that just showed me, wow, with a combination of a light leak here and the curves, we can start creating something a, a lot different than we're used to seeing with just the regular, um, you know, the, the, with the regular tools itself. So we go all the way back to the top. And I'm going to go back to the original preset. Celebrate. Wait for a moment. Again, I like how that's giving us an indication that it's working. And there it is. So with Celebrate, I, I do like how it's using the light leaks along with... Uh, the, the darkening of the image, it's bringing out the darkness with it along with the bright. So once again, I use this as a quick learning tool just to help me be a little bit more creative on some of the processing. All right. So now that I have that set here, it's just a matter of me right clicking. In fact, let's, I love this look. However, I only want it for this particular image. So... I am going to hide, give it a second to render. I am going to come back over and make it hide, um, hide the, that light leak, because I don't want that to be on all the images, because then it doesn't look as special. So let's hide it. Here we go. And then under presets, come down here, actions. And I'm going to create the preset. Jaden Verdon 4. And then later we can just go back, you know, and, and organize it a little bit better. But now that I have that set, I can just right click. Try that again. There we go. Right click. Adjustments. Copy the adjustments. Come back to Jaden. Now, just those images, even the ones I'm not going to keep, I can just select one, come all the way down, keep coming right to here, shift, select. Now I have all of those selected, right click, adjustment, and paste. So now that we created that, that unique look, 
for this particular set. Now I just applied it to all those images. And it'll take a few seconds for it to render. And now I can give these to the clients as finished uh, finish pieces. And of course, you can go back through, make sure your cropping is good, and everything along those lines. All right? So that was a real quick creative edit for that one image. Now, let's give it a second. And you're going to notice when it starts doing stuff like this, because it's working in the background, it is tying up some of my resources. So I find that if I just double click on one of them, it, it kind of like speeds up the process. All right. So I do want to do one more for you. And this, this image here. Now the lighting conditions are not the same. So let's give it a second. Here we go. So I could apply the same or attempt to apply the same look to this one. But if the lighting conditions are not the same, chances are it's not going to look as good. So once again, let's check up here. Now it is seeing, um, it is seeing some shrubs in the background. So Savannah may work good. Um, what I want to do though, let me move up a little bit. Here we go. Is I want this photo to give me an idea of what may look good. Now, let, let's try the environmental portrait. Here's artistic. All right, that's not bad. So I may put a pin in artistic. Let's see what silver does. A little too bright. An outdoor. Give it a second. Yeah, outdoor. Nope, so I'm going to go back to artistic. So I like artistic. However, we got to edit. It's just a little, uh, in my opinion, it, the colors are just jumping out a little bit too much. Well, here I am with edits. I could go back through and figure out which one of these tools is causing that. Or I could just simply come over here and apply color. A little desaturation. Pop up the vibrancy just a bit. And there we have it. Before, after. So I took the base and then from the base, just, you know, worked it a little bit differently. Now, I can at the face is a little too dark for me. I could come back down here and try to figure out which tool, chances are it's probably Matt. Nope, maybe the mood tool. Details, yep, it's the mood tool. So it is the mood tool that, that's making the, the face just a little too bright for me. So I could do my adjustments here, or if it's something I can live with, I'll do it. The goal I'm trying to get away from is applying a mask. So if I need to, I can always come over, go back to edits, and let's see, super contrast again. And I'm noticing it's in the face, or the highlights of the face. Yep, there we are. All right, and there it is. So now I have it set. And you know the drill. Click. Save as a preset. And we're going to save this preset as, you guessed it, Jaden 4. Or Jaden 5, rather. All right, and all I did was just added a little extra to it. Now... <laughs> For those watching here, Carl, you know why I chose this image, of course, because I did a Dutch tilt purposely. If at the very end, at the very end of this, if you look at this, I love this. And the reason, again, I wanted to show you it is this is a good example. If I shot this traditionally, let's level it all up. Now, Grant, you just don't worry about the head for now. But if I shot this traditionally, I mean, to me, this is, a, this is a very nice image. It looks good like this. 
This is a traditional portrait. I have enough of those. So, apply a little Dutch tilt to it. And maybe straighten it up just a little bit. Not to the point to where you lose that little, that little flare, but it's there. And again, that Dutch tilt is either you like it or you hate it. There's no in-betweens. Um, love it or hate it. So I wanted to do this one purposely to show you guys as a little inside joke to our team about pairing this on. All right? So there we have it. Um, just by simply... Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, just by simply applying a preset first, helping you with your creativity, you're able to create mind-blowing edits at a fraction of the time it would take me to do this with traditional software. All right? So, Carl, let's open it up for um, questions. So go ahead and raise your hands if you have a question or put them in the chat. And let me go back here. I thought I saw one that could be a potential question in the chat. Well, there goes Harvey. Has his hand up. Benelli, how did you right. pin that preset? How do you pin a preset? That was it. Okay. Um, if for some reason, why is it already popping up? But okay. So yeah, so to pin the preset to the, to the um, favorites is click on the heart. So if you notice here, um, let's use this one right here. If I collect, if I select add to favorites, now when I come back over to my favorites, oh, I'm sorry. If I go over to my favorites, back to it <coughs> here, you'll see the right, one that right. I just, just added. Now I oh. am getting a little too much. Oh, do I miss the undo? Um, I am getting a little too many. So I, what I would probably end up doing is going back and start deleting some of these favorites that I haven't used in so long. All right. And by the way, I wondered what it would have looked like. Black and white was my next choice. Um, I wanted to go through it on that. Okay. I, I'm familiar right. with that, putting in your favorites. But if you don't name it, when I go back into the favorites, I don't remember which one I picked for that photo. It, Oh, that's my gotcha. problem. Yeah. So yeah. in the past, yeah. So in the past, you were able to actually see what was the name of the, the preset that you used. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have that right now. So once you select the preset, when you get to edit, I do wish down in here somewhere, it gave like the very bottom here, maybe on the very, very bottom, it said um, whatever the preset was that it originated from. So you can always go back to that preset, but we don't have that. <clears throat> um, so you'd have to do what I do and just rename them, just name them and uh, add them to your favorites. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Yep. Next. So Janet noted that one of the tools created sort of a halo effect around her head, around, you know, around her hair, especially. Um, what would which you do about it? that? How would you? I don't know which tool did it. I was answering no, questions. No, I mean, which which, pre, which um, image? This one. And again, that's do you where, see how it's lighter? Quality, do you see it's lighter yeah. around her hair? There's sort of a halo. For this one right here? <clears throat> Not this image. I think it was this image. Oh, Janet, oh, Janet oh, yeah, oh, you can oh, unmute. Tap, top left. Right, she's talking about Janet's talking about the oh, two no. or or right this. there. Oh, that's that. right. Yeah. Oh, the bokeh. That, that, those aren't halos. So, so that's that's the okay. bokeh. Um, right. Yeah. So now you have to make a decision. If you, if you don't like it, right? If that's not something you like, you know, I can go in with the erase tool, um, and I can go into the erase tool and get rid of those if I need to, or like I showed you before, copy pieces of this and move it over. But again, that's purely an artistic viewpoint on your end. Um, I don't have a problem with those being here because it's by your head. If they were like way over here, now my eyes are being moved away from her and not to her. So 
And again, that's my opinion. But if you don't like it, just remember we did this before. We just duplicated the background layer. And when the clone stamp tool is put back into the software, you would do the clone stamp. But for now, since it's not, and I have it here, let me back to it. Here's my layers. Right? I could just drag it and move it over just a little bit and then do that masking that we talked about before um, and actually fill it. Yeah. Here, mask, fill. All right, and then go back and brush. And I'm going to paint back in these areas here that we're missing out. You see what I mean? And you, I would take more time, of course. But you, you get you get the gist of what I'm saying. How you could actually take pieces of the image and copy over that, if that's something you don't like. But remember, that's, again, quality control. Um, and that's something you could do after you apply them to all the images. All right? All right, Carl, let's end it here, but uh, we'll, we'll stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. For you can ask any questions pertaining to photography, uh, Neo, Neo the, the, the topic that we just did. All right? Well, everyone else, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you at the next Coffee Break.